on the dunk. Chris 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 State. Well, who else? This young man is a player. Brings energy and effort and makes plays when his team needs him. Foul. And going to the line most likely will be Georgia. See Chris Anderson just slide right inside the Georgia defense. Morris gave up the position. Can't let it happen. Anderson with the finish. Fourth Louisiana Tech Bulldog with four fouls now as Alex Hamilton joins that man right there, Chris Anderson, with four. This will be a two shot, and oof. Not getting any better today for Charles Mann. He's missed uh, the front end. Thornton missed one, and now this is the first of a second. Down, down 11. You need him. Man at 29, 25 second half points in the win over the Catamounts. Coming up to the three minute mark in this second round NIT game. That's Anderson with a handoff. A little motion offense being run here. Smith on the drive. He falls. McNeil saves it, throws it. Hamilton dancing along the baseline. Nine seconds to shoot. Smith sees the time, guns the three ball, deadly! Timeout, Louisiana Tech. That's an amazing effort there because you don't really think of Kenneth Smith as a great three-point shooter, but he is 38%. And Georgia, by the way, and the reason I hesitated to say anything is, is it was a bench warning called by official Rick Crawford on the Georgia bench. Somebody said something. To his credit, Crawford didn't go off and give him a technical foul. I think that's very controlled officiating, but still, you can understand why Georgia's bench would be upset. The big issue again, and it happened right in front of us where we can't see the baseline or the sideline, is whether or not that Louisiana Tech was out of bounds with the ball. Uh, but the bigger issue is from an effort standpoint, two loose balls available. La Tech comes up with both of them, which led to a speedy slip through. And that has kind of been this game in a nutshell as to who has played just that edge harder or a couple of edges harder, and it's been Louisiana Tech. So Georgia has to almost remount another comeback, and Gaines misses, and it's in the hands of Louisiana Tech again. All the effort that Georgia put into this, and now it's almost like they have to start again. And a foul in the corner. A 13 or 209. It's pretty simple math. La Tech goes to a foul line and makes free throws. They're going to win the basketball game. Still one and one. Nine fouls on Georgia. The next time they do it, it'll be double bonus. You're going to check in for Georgia to get some three point shooting on the floor. That's what Georgia's going to have to do right now is start firing up threes if they can. Michael Kaiser has as many blocks as points today. He'll miss the front end of the corner. Oh. Boy, Smith just chases after that ball. All the time for Louisiana Tech, number four in blue. Almost got a steal there. And Mann will go to the line. He got a little hip check from Smith. Not a big one, but enough to draw the whistle. Inside two minutes, if I'm Michael White, I'm asking him to check the monitor and make sure he did not step on the three-point line. That's going to be three fouls on Smith. And they must have heard you because that is exactly what's going to happen. I'll check the monitor to see if this is going to be a two-shot foul or a three-shot foul with a minute and 50 remaining in the opportunity to play either Florida State or Georgetown in the next round of the NIT. Well, at the very end of that play, Charles Mann kind of leaned in to the defender to, to create the foul, kind of a la Chris Mullen. We're going way back on that one. Well, not that far back. And he's but he's going to step in again. And no, he didn't. He leaned with his shoulders, but he did not move his feet. I think he's behind the line, Dave. We'll see what the officials have to say about it. I'm in agreement with you. And it looks like it's going to be three. 
So Charles Mann with the clock stopped is only two out of five from the line today. But he has an opportunity here to cut it down to ten and still give Georgia a beating heart in this game. Six in the line, man has nine points. Well, give that man right there a lot of credit, his staff, for the recruiting they've done. Outstanding staff. Dusty May, former Indiana guy, Isaac Brown. Chris Anderson from Michigan. All the way to Western Louisiana. And they've gone where they needed to to get players. And they're good ones. And they're getting more out of Florida. Jacoby Boykins is coming in, a, a wingman who is exactly right for Louisiana Tech. Plenty of him on the AAU circuit. He can play. He fits in well with what the Bulldogs approach is. Knock out of bounds or a foul. No, it's going to be a foul. And now it's double bonus. Louisiana Tech and a fire two the rest of the way. Do not foul 94 feet from the basket. La Tech style. They want to stay aggressive. They want to make Georgia use some clock, but there's no reason to pick up a foul. Put him at the line, especially with no time going off the clock. That's going to be a four on Morris. He is the first Georgia Bulldog to be with four fouls. Hamilton at the line. Man, that was way off and was way off. Morris checks out of the game. Frazier comes back in. He's been out for a while. Hamilton, that's the first of five free throws he's attempted today that he missed. Substitution for Louisiana. Cordarius Johnson back in the game. Take Alex Hamilton out. Get a little bit bigger defensively. This is one of the advantages of being a pressing team. If you're late in the game and you want somebody to use some clock, it's not new for you or something you rarely use. It's who you are. Frazier, he'll try a three ball. He's been hot for three all day. It's down to eight with 141 to go. Smith looking for the inbounds. Remember, Georgia doesn't have a timeout, and Louisiana Tech just has one left. How about is it okay to foul 92 feet from the basket? Well, in that situation, you have to because <laughs> the clock's running down and they inbounded it. What you want to do is exactly what Georgia did. Take a chance at a steal first after it's inbounded. You see the nice kick out from three by Frazier. He's played big in this second half. But you want to at least let the inbound come in, get a chance at a steal first, maybe lose a tick or two. But have a chance to make a defensive play, they're going to steal a bucket. That's three on Frazier McNeil at the line. He was devastating in the first half with his three-point shooting when Louisiana Tech was building up a lead that was as large as 26. No problem for McNeil. And Georgia's done a lot of nice things to get back into this game. Good effort, especially a couple guys off the bench. Forte and Frazier, like Fox made nice adjustment, but that's an awful big hole to get out of, isn't it, Dave? And Mann did a beautiful job of reading the play to get the easy layout. Kaiser wasn't going to try to foul him. Now a press from Georgia, but Louisiana Texans certainly understand that. And Smith in front of us, jump ball, tied up, possession arrow, Georgia. And Smith comes up. Unable to get off the floor. And for all the talk we've had of Chris Anderson today and how he's been the best player, the most important player you could argue for Louisiana Tech is right there on the floor, Kenneth Smith. Well, Kenneth Speedy Smith, an outstanding point guard. A lot of assists, very few turnovers. No different today. You see the trap come from Georgia. Thornton and Gaines very aggressive. Little knee to knee bang right there from Thornton. That smarts. Mm. That's what sent him to the ground and ultimately forced the jump ball that goes Georgia's way. I actually thought he was going to take a moment to try to squeeze in that last time out. Now he's going to have to step out of the game. The question is, is he going to be able to come back? And we certainly hope so. Averages more assists, three tenths of an assist higher than his point average. 7.6 points, 7.9 assists. Has the Conference USA single season record for most assists and came into the game second in the nation. 
And how about the timely three he hit a few possessions back? This guy's a gamer, makes all the big plays for La Tech, and a big reason. It looks like they're headed for a time. They score a record 29 wins at La Tech. Georgia will get it. Frazier's been deadly from three. He's right at the bottom of your screen now. Last in the corner, number 30. In white. Man on the drive. Gaines. And he lays it in. Lines are backed off a little bit. Down to six again. Try to get a steal and then a quick foul. Got to hurry. They didn't get the steal. And they haven't gotten the foul either. There's going to be a timeout. I don't think that's a foul. I believe it's going to see. Yeah, it's timeout. And that's it. We have no more timeouts in this game, in the regulation part of this game. I like what Georgia did right there offensively. When it's a three possession game, you need three scores. If you can get a good quick one attacking the basket like Kenny Gaines did, take the quick basket, and then perfect execution defensively. You want to try to force a quick trap and a turnover. At that point, had they not gotten the timeout, La Tech, then Georgia would have been forced to foul. Do you think Hamilton was just waiting to get fouled and that's why he didn't advance it, or he just couldn't? I think he was afraid that he couldn't, and he thought he was going to get fouled, but a heads up play to call the timeout. Well. Georgia, part of the SEC and the most storied conference in college sports, lives on a new 24-7 network launching in August of this year. Go to GetSECNetwork.com and demand the network from your television provider right now. And there is that fourth quarter sign once again. The Louisiana Tech understands crazed pressure in the NIT as the way they pulled off their first round win against Iona. They get the good look for Hamilton and who else but Speedy Smith using that speed for the tip in and then how about this heave? Almost banked in. Entertaining game and a wild finish. And a great crowd there in Ruston. And a Nearly great, packed the place. And a great crowd here today. Yep. Yep. Stegman Coliseum for Georgia. And I didn't see too many leave when it got to 13 with a couple of minutes to go and now it's six with 57.3 again. No timeouts in the game. And the moment we don't see Kenneth Smee Smith coming back in. Took a knee to a knee. And doesn't even have that other brace pulled up. He's hurt. And those things can be really painful and, and long lasting. I hope it's not the case as to whether he plays in this next round or not. Frazier trying to knock it away. And they do still it. Frazier had it knocked away. Louisiana Tech ball on the possession arrow with 47.9 to go. Frazier with the freshman mistake. He was worried about setting up his dribble. Good steal. Instead of just attacking and throwing ahead, he stops and worries about trying to set up his three-point shot. You have to know that the defense is coming from behind on a turnover, especially this La Tech team. Yeah, they have knocked it away many times from behind. Now they go to McNeil, and he has bumped several times. <laughs> I think Marcus Thornton will be hit with a foul. It only took 2.9 seconds, so the third foul on Thornton. And McNeil back to the line. He just knocked down two. He's got 13 on the day. Again, even though it's a six-point game, had Frazier been able to throw the ball ahead, they got a chance for a quick two, maybe even an end one against the broken defense in transition. Instead, they get a turnover and send Rob Tech to the foul. He's got a high arcing shot, does McNeil. 80 plus percent free throw shooter. That's the guy you want at the line. If you're Michael White, good sub getting Kaiser, the rim protector, back in the game. Kaiser's not a very good free throw shooter either. So if he comes down with a rebound, he's only at 51%, and you foul him right away. Georgia down seven. Man. Thornton. Frazier, this is his spot. Juricic fighting for it. Frazier comes away with it. And gets it past Kaiser. It's a five-point Louisiana Tech lead. Two possessions in 30 seconds. Plenty of time. They get it in the hands of Anderson. He's fouled. Almost lost the ball out of bounds. Georgia and Thornton nearly got a turnover. It's a good aggressive Fourth. play by Thornton. You see the rush challenge three, but a good effort by Juricic to keep it alive. Frazier with a dipsy two finish. This is one of the first loose balls there that Georgia has gotten to today. 
Well, we can't tell it from that angle, but that might have been clean. Could have been an anticipated foul call. All right, Chris Anderson is a 65% foul shooter. So far today, he's four out of six. They begin regardless of what happens at the foul line. Two possession game. Even if he makes this one, 30 seconds, a lot of time. If you can get a quick one, take the quick two. Doesn't have to be a three. Don't waste time or take a bad three. It is a six-point game. Running a crawl here, so the clock doesn't start until the ball is picked up. Frazier thought about the three. Takes the drive against Kaiser, who sent it back. All day, you have called him the rim protector, and right when Louisiana Tech needed it most, Michael Kaiser's seventh block of the day. A little dribble handoff ball screen action, and he never got by Kaiser. He's got to scoop that in front of him. Kaiser wins the length battle. He's been outstanding today around the rim. For Darius Johnson is a 64% foul shooter. The senior, 15 on the day for him. Give Michael White credit for piecing this team together the way he wants to play. A tough, physical, play-off-the-bounce four-man in Anderson. A rim protector in Kaiser. A rock-steady, speedy point guard. Who I hope is going to be okay if Louisiana Tech advances to the next round. Frazier banks it in. Holds everything. It's a four-point game. Frazier with 15. Wow! Frazier with some serious range, pulling from the logo. I don't know if Banks are open this time on Saturday, but he gets a nice kiss on that one. Hamilton with 18. Now 19. And Louisiana Tech making most of their free throws down the stretch. How many more miraculous threes does Georgia have in them in the final 15.9? We'll find out. They're going to need two of them. Frazier going to wait, going to wait. All right. Can he shoot another miraculous three? Well, he almost walked. Thornton for three. No. Big rebound. And again, it's Anderson who comes away with a rebound. And Kaiser send the Louisiana Tech to the next round of the NIT. They're just resetting the clock to, from 2.1 to 3.4, and Louisiana Tech never trailed in this game. Well, a lot of Tech, an outstanding team. Got up big and held on, babe. Give them credit. Georgia becomes the first SEC team to lose in this postseason. They've made a tremendous comeback, but Louisiana Tech moving on. They get their 29th win on the year and their 10th on the road. And they'll take on either Florida State or Georgetown. I'm sure they're going to be very, very prepared for that game. That'll be a fantastic finish. Now, for Darren Horn and our entire crew, I'm Dave Lamont. Let's go to Kevin Agandi in studio. Kevin? Dave, thank you so much. For those of you waiting and uh, anticipating the tip-off for Notre Dame versus Robert Morris in the women's tournament, first-round action coming moments away. But right now, we have a very good 5-12 matchup in our early games in the women's side. Florida Gulf Coast down by one to Oklahoma State. Let's head out there in overtime. They practice, and then they come back in later in the day, and all they do is knock down shots, Jimmy. Outside shots. Outside shots, outside shots. It's what this team has been about. Very important that these three officials get this right. When was the timeout granted is what they have to look at. When does the arm go up? There's possession. Boom. The arm goes up. 3.1, 3.2. You can see the clock at the other end. And I, I, I think there's more than 2.7. If they come together and look at it again, when did they make the call? And it's very, I'm telling you, it's a very possible, very important three or four tenths of a second. And right now, Michael Price still at the table. I think they go to 3-1. From sitting over here, if I'm an official, from what I saw, I go to 3-1, and that's what they go to. A good call and a good catch by the crew. So a catch and shoot opportunity here for the Eagles. I try to throw it to 14 if I can. She's 6-3, can, can catch a tough pass. 
and the pass intercepted. Oklahoma State has it. Foul was called late. And they will hang tight here for a second. Hope Camp made that call. When did the foul occur? When did the foul occur? When was the timeout granted is what you think about late clock. And the foul occurs there at point seven. We still have time to play. I don't know if it's going to be point seven, but when did the foul occur is what the officials now have to go to the monitor and check. It's not when the foul was called. When did the foul occur? And so far, the foul hadn't occurred. Boom, maybe right there, maybe point three. I think it's closer to one second. So Whitney Knight with the foul. Game's, game's over. There it is, one second. So you're, the game's not over. You're